to infinity and beyond. What's up everybody, it's Roger and James here from this kingdom.com and in this episode we are going to be talking all about the new Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. There's loads of information was released this week including its release date which is coming out on September 19th in North America on Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and PC. And we've got to see some new trailer footage, we've got to see some story details, a special collector's edition. Um, what did you think of the trailer straight off the bat? Um, honestly, I thought it was a pretty good trailer. Uh, the Marvel sections of it were cool. Ultron kind of merging with, I guess his name is Sigma, mm -hmm. uh, the, the the Mega Man villain, was pretty awesome. But for the most part, it doesn't really change my opinion of the game, which mm -hmm. is, as we've talked about in the past, I really like the Marvel half of it, and I am completely ambivalent to the Capcom half of it. Yeah. And I... I it reinforced for me that I would really just want a mode in this game. It doesn't have to be like a major yeah. mode, but a mode where I can just be like, no, only Marvel characters for this part. You can have your Capcom guys. And I know there are a lot of a lot of diehard yeah. Capcom fans who are probably screaming at their uh, their iPhone or whatever right now, but that's, that's just how I feel about it. Yeah, I, I think that's the kind of thing now where I think Marvel's so much bigger than Capcom that they don't really need. They've got enough... It, you know, we've got Injustice coming out, which shows that, you, that Marvel could do this on his own. I like the fact they're doing the story. It kind of makes a little bit more sense. Um, um, it definitely looks a very, very crisp game. The idea also that they're adding this story mode also says that um, you know they're, they're trying to offer a lot of content to it. Because I think a lot of people are wary of Capcom following Street Fighter V, which was very lacking and had lots of issues with story, um, things. But um, as far as I'm concerned, you know, it's a fighting game. You know, just, you know... It's that thing of, you know, they'll tweak it. And stuff, but fighting games have become so much bigger than what they were when they were just in arcades. You know, now it's all about esports and very, very different. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, this is obviously following the Street Fighter formula, while Injustice is following the Mortal Kombat formula, mm -hmm. uh, which means this one tends to be a lot more kinetic, a lot more frantic, a lot more you know crazy stuff yeah. happening on the screen. And honestly, I think for a superhero game, again, ignoring the Capcom half of it, that's probably better. Yeah. And I think once you when you get that part of the game, I think we're we're going to see a lot of very cool stuff. You I know, mean, we mm. we see Ultron in action. We've got we know Rocket Raccoon is going to be in it. Yeah. Captain Marvel, etc. Yeah. They they, said, um, Ultron, Hulk, Thor, Hawkeye, Rocket Raccoon, Chung Lee, Strider, and Chris. Um, Redfield have all been confirmed for the game, so right. the lineup's inc increasing. And I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they obviously uh, confirm a lot more of the very popular movie characters. We'll see, you know, Star Lord might see, uh, you know, Doctor Strange and and so on and so forth. Yeah. It'd be it'd be no pun intended strange for them not to include the popular no. movie characters. I think um, the real question that most people have uh, is. Are the X Men going to show up in this game? <laughs> I think, yeah, I th I mean, I think like Wolverine and stuff is probably probably all right, but it's whether or not they promote it as much. Um, See, just going to kind of yeah, it's it's that thing, isn't it? Like, it it's a questionable. Of, yeah. We already know the Fantastic Four won't be in this game because Marvel has tried to disavow anything to do with the Fantastic yeah. Four, but. The X Men are popular enough; they might try to squeeze it in, even though they are trying to keep them out of media. Sorry, I cut you off or something. Yeah, there. yeah. I was going to add, um, they kind of announced the details. Of obviously, the standard game, uh, which is going to be priced around about sixty dollars, and they're also going to be a special deluxe edition, which is eighty nine dollars, which includes the main game plus the um, two thousand and seventeen character pass, which includes access to six additional characters, posts, including um, Sigma, and. If you pre-order it, you get, um, in America, you get the War 4 and Evil Ryu costumes. Um, now, what is, and you also get, um, the pre-order bonus for the deluxe version is the same, but it also gets a Gladiator Hulk and a Mega Man uh, Command Mission X costume. What I thought was interesting now was the fact that they said the 2017 character pass, so what, which is similar to what they did with Street Fighter Five. Right, and also... Um... Marvel Heroes has been doing the, you know, the advance packs per year yeah. as well. Um, I mean, it it simply says something we'd already suspected, which is, <clears throat> excuse me, that they they have multiple year plan yeah. for this. You know, they might not know what the plan for 2018 is yet, but I'm sure that they're going to take a look at what's popular in the movies, what's popular with TV shows. We're going to have Cloak and Dagger showing up. The Runaways are going to show up. <clears throat> you know, 
I expect that they're just going to want to keep milking this for as much as as they can, as long as the prices are reasonable. I have no idea what no. the Street Fighter Five prices look like. I don't know if if their prices match the content. I don't know if they'll continue yeah. that with this. But if they can, if they can say like, you get X amount of characters for Y amount of dollars, and it, it turns out to be a good combination, or if they can include like you know stories with the characters that they add, Capcom or Marvel. Yeah, sure. As long as they, uh, you know, as long as it's good value for your money, yeah. that's the real trick. It definitely seems again like that like almost like, like platform process where the game, the sales of the game, is you get in the core game, but they are really after the long, long idea of bringing you lots of characters and stuff afterwards, um, which is generally just part of the issue. We obviously we've talked about in the past of video games essentially needing to go up in price to offer everything included in the in the standalone price, but. The fact that we're getting a two thousand it's it's the fact that it says it's a two thousand seventeen character pack was what happened went wrong with Street Fighter Five, but also then it opens it up. 2018, 2019, we could just continue seeing new characters added to the content and because they've completely reworked Street Fighter Five and fixed a load of issues over time. And they again they want these as platforms where people just keep but coming in and buying it because they make more money on extra content than just keep churning out the game. Yeah, and you know, it's probably at this point easier for developers to follow the mobile uh, strategy of doing what you were describing, which is to to create a platform and then just keep adding on to it over time. The Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 are very advanced systems now. Hmm. Uh, and we've got, like, the PlayStation 4 Pro and the Scorpio coming out next year. So, yeah, there, there's really no reason why Marvel Hero – or, sorry, Marvel Heroes, Ultimate Marvel, Capcom, Infinite – couldn't be a game that exists for the next four or five years yeah. where they just keep adding characters onto it. And then, you know, a- after enough time passes, they just release an ultimate, ultimate pack where yeah. you get everything in one go. And then Infinite Number 2 comes out. Yeah. But Yeah. No, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's good. And also in some ways as well, because Marvel vs. Capcom is so different from, for example, like Marvel Heroes Omega or against like the Spider-Man game, they are, they're offering an entirely different kind of content, which... Is kind of how they've done it with the with the, the mobile suite of having different types of gaming. Because I look at this as like you know obviously some people are like oh there's too many Mar-, you know a few too many Marvel games in production because you've got the Avengers one and some other one. Right. But they're also different. They're they're entirely different genres, and I think that's the key. Right. And the, like you're saying, that's what they're doing in the Marvel in the mobile market. You've got Avengers Academy for the people who want to do like the management games. You've got Contest of Champions for the people who want to do fighting games. You've got Future Fight for people who want action RPGs and so on. And if they can continue that in the console market with Marvel, Star Wars, Disney, yeah, why not? Let's have as many games as the market will safely hold. We don't want to oversaturate it. But, you know, some people are going to want to buy this. Other people are going to want to buy Spider-Man. Some people want to buy both. And it's perfectly fine to just yeah. kind of find your own little niche in no, there. No, that's good. Um, they also announced a special deluxe, sort of a, sorry, a special collector's edition. They brought to you by Triforce, which is going to be available on Xbox One. Um, PlayStation 4 includes four premium dioramas of, Cap- of Captain Marvel, Iron Man, Mega Man X, and Chung Lee, filled with a infinity six Infinity Stone replicas, and steelbook packaging that includes a deluxe for only two or just under two hundred dollars. Contents may vary depending on region and for European pricing, please check retailers. As of as of last week when I was looking around, I couldn't find the UK version. Um because I was a little bit I was a little bit tempted with this one because this one looked rather sweet. I've got to admit, you know, when it comes to statues and video game um, packages, you've got to be very careful because they, they tend to be lower quality like we saw, I think, with yeah. like the Tomb Raider packages and whatnot. But the promo pieces we saw for these look awesome. The yeah. Iron Man and the Captain Marvel one in particular look great. I, you know, Mega Man X and Chun-Li, I could take or leave. But, yeah, it, I mean, if it wasn't 200 bucks, I'd probably be a little more tempted. <laughs> but, yeah, I'll grant you... It, it's a pretty impressive package, and that, yeah. that's saying quite a bit. Most of these I dismiss out of hand, but mm. yeah, it's those kind look of good. it's that kind of that thing as well. Like with the thing, I mean, for me, I, I've been a big fan of Street Fighter way since I was playing back in the arcades, and um, obviously Mega Man games. I remember having on the Game Boy and stuff. So they've I think they've put they've put good characters from the 
Capcom side that will appeal in general. Um, it's a very good set. I will be very, very tempted when it comes. But then I am looking at it going, well, okay, so if I'm getting the deluxe edition of the game, that's 100 bucks. So therefore, each of these characters, these figures are costing me 25 bucks. Would I pay for that for that? Um, I, it's that thing. It, it looks great. Um, again, it depends on the size of them, how they work out and stuff. But I am very, I am tempted, but I, as I'm over here in this big pile of boxes, I have got already a premium collector's edition of a great big beast that I previously brought in a collector's edition for a Marvel game. And what do you do with them all? It's the question. <laughs> so, but um, I do like it. It's certainly a, a very interesting set that um, I think is going to be very popular and probably will sell out. I think that that's very likely. The one thing I'm thinking of that might make it a little more uh, palatable for people like me is that there might be a secondary market for some of these statues. So I would keep Iron Man and Captain Marvel for myself, maybe put them on the display shelf back here or something like that, yeah. and then see if I could sell Mega Man X and Chun-Li because I don't really care for them so much. They're both awesome characters, but I just I don't need a statue yeah. for them. But yeah. they look awesome, so fans of the characters... Mm. Should want them, and they might not want to spend two hundred bucks, but maybe twenty five dollars a pop on eBay or something, and it helps subsidize the cost of the game. I do like the fact that they, you know, they include Captain Marvel in there. I think that's that's a good mm -hmm. kind of strong sort of point. You know, you got two females, two males. Um, just in general, I think it's a good a good little kind of thing. Um, but no, again, very excited. I think as we get probably closer to release, um, obviously E three will find out a lot more on this. Probably be a probably be a, out there for demo. And then over the summer, they'll probably just start churning out, you know, character reveals in the run-up. Because personally, I think, you know, they've obviously been doing it with Injustice, but they do the same with the WWE. They do, you know, releasing the roster just bit by bit is a great way of just keeping um, excitement for the game rolling and a kind of a good way of doing it. But yeah, um, September's good. I'm liking the fact that it's September. Um, that means it's away from... Star Wars Battlefront and also away from Super Mario Odyssey, so keeping away from that and it's out early enough, I think, in the season to kind of build for it. And obviously, as very much been aware now, the annual thing of having games out around Christmas holiday is going now. You can release in a AAA game any time of the year you want now. Um, I'll be honest, I could have loved, loved, would have loved to have seen this on the Switch, but it's obviously not much powerful enough. But yeah, I'm really excited about this game and, and looking forward to playing it. I'm still kind of on the fence for it, but I'm I'm definitely going to give it a shot. I'm waiting to see what kind of modes they have in it, and you know what the full character roster looks like, because you know the, they've announced some big names, but there are still a lot of big names uh, left. Think, yeah, I think because actually I think because I've um, played a number of these games way back since back on the PlayStation days and PlayStation Two, and um, been playing. Street, for me, it's like well, this is a Street Fighter game and a Marvel game. Great, I'm. It's a game that I can just jump in. I've got no chance of playing competitively on, online, but um, story mode and just jumping in and doing some fighting and stuff for me, it's just like, yeah, hey, okay, this is good. I'm I like these kind of games. I'm not a I'm not a kind of a, a fighting game where I will play continuously and constantly, but jump in, do the campaign, play it a little bit, perfect for me. And I'm you know, like I said, I I would have picked this up regardless uh, because I've just I just like that the style of game. Yeah, I'm not. Not going anywhere near the competitive scene at all. I will get destroyed. Yes. I mean, absolutely murdered because yeah. I'm terrible at these games. I will probably be playing it on the easiest difficulty, and I will still be like throwing my controller because the the computer will be standing there, not blocking, like attacking once every ten seconds, and I will still lose. Yeah, see, I would probably just jump scene. straight into Ryu. Probably all of his moves, his move set will be identical to the one that I've got in my muscle memory. Right. Um, <laughs> are you okay? Yep, just <laughs> roll and fire, roll yeah, and fire. Yeah, that's basically what I'll be doing. All the other, it's, it is funny how some of those moves are, literally I have got, they're like just burned into your brain of how to do them. I'm just playing that, that game so much, especially... When I have played that the arcade, but also on like the Super Nintendo. I remember buying Street Fighter 2 Mega Collect or Mega One on my Mega Drive for and I remember it costing sixty five bucks uh, pounds like twenty odd years ago. And then I went and brought the six uh, the six button controller for the Genesis um, to play it. I mean I spent like a hundred pounds and this was <laughs> and you're thinking like this is twenty odd years ago. I mean it's probably like buying a four hundred pound game for Street Fighter. So I loved it when I was a teenager. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's that kind of I did I I kind of have that 
kind of connection with Street Fighter. It's like, yeah, I know, and I played all the other games and Street Fighter Alpha on the PlayStation and you know Marvel vs. Capcom on the PS2. So I have, I'm a little bit more invested, I think, in this as a, as a series. Right, and that, it's kind of funny that you mentioned that like a lot of these games that we grew up with, you know, we played them a lot more than the games yeah. we play now. With the exception of MMOs like Marvel Heroes or whatever, typically once we're done with a game, we're we're done with it, and we and we don't have these things where we have to do the same stuff over and over and over again because that's just how the games were designed. Yeah, I mean, we we talked about this with the Disney Afternoon Collection last week, where it's like I haven't played Ducktales in twenty something years, and I still knew where some of the secrets yeah. were because of how many times I played through it. Yeah. Street Fighter is very much the same way, and this is, you know, it's not the same name, but this is a Street Fighter game, and. Mm. Yeah, you know, I'll be doing Hadoukens <laughs> just like I just like I hadn't stopped playing fifteen years ago. Yeah, I'm trying so. to get that, I'm trying to get the button bash for Chung Lee to get to get the lightning kick. It yeah, is exactly. looking good. Um, I'm really excited about it. As per usual, guys, let us know what you guys are looking forward to in the comments below. You can watch or listen on all different platforms, including VidMe, YouTube, and you can also find us on our podcast platforms like Apple Podcasts. Um, you can find us on all the different social medias and obviously check us out on our Infinity and Beyond Facebook group and join in the discussion over there. You can also find James over at HeroicLegacy.com and we shall see you guys in another episode. Laters. Later. Later.